trg Vladimir and Kosara Square, city of Bar, beginning a new journey. Bar is a city in the southern part of Montenegro. It's first mentioned in a record from a 10th century, but it's known that people have lived here long before that. Bar is a tourist destination and beside beaches, it also has various other cultural and historical content. Here is also the largest port of Montenegro. Keep in mind that this is a small town and the people mainly come for the sea, so that's where we'll start the story. The beach is about 500 meters long and covered with pebbles. It's very crowded, but there is always a free spot. Along its entire length there is a path with many cafes and restaurants. Keep in mind that prices here are a bit higher and we were not impressed by the food either. And here we are, next to the port. There are many different boats here, but I will try to get to the lighthouse if I can. And here I am, just a hundred meters from the end of this path. The lighthouse is reachable by another path, around. But here we can enjoy the view. From here we can clearly see the mountains above the city. Everywhere around we are surrounded by mountains and on the other side is the sea. It's really beautiful. On this side here there is the port where various things are transported. While on the other side there are beaches running along the entire land of the coast. At the other end of the bar beach begins the Shushan beach. The beach is very popular and very crowded. The reason is this little forest where swimmers can hide from the sun, so it's advisable to come early to find a free spot. The beach is also covered with small stones and the water is often cloudy due to the number of swimmers. There is a lot of trash, especially cigarette butts. The city itself is very nice. It's clear that they work on a tourism, but not even close to the western standards. The biggest problem are roads. All along the coasts from Sutomore to Ada Bojana beach, there is only one road. So the traffic jams are very large and cars barely move. Near the Bar City beach, there is a King Nicholas castle. It was built in 1885 and today it houses a museum where you can see various clothing items, jewelry, swords and mostly furniture. The entrance fee was 2 euros. In front of me is the church of Saint Jovan Vladimir, which was completed in 2016, after numerous problems that followed its construction. Initially the construction was forbidden by the Communist Party, later there was no money and finally it was completed in 2016. The first request for construction was rejected in 1979. After massive protests the city approved its construction in 1981, but due to lack of funds, the work began in 2006 and the foundation was poured in in 2009. Today this is the largest church in Montenegro, with capacity of 1200 people. On the church there are 11 belts and the largest one weighs around 800 kilograms. The church is really spacious and beautifully painted. We arrived at the old olive tree, estimated to be somewhere between 2000 and 2400 years old. Bar is very famous for its olive oil production and there are over 100,000 trees here. We visited this tree and the entrance fee was 1 euro for adults and 50 cents for children. Yes, you heard that right. You have to pay 1 euro to see the tree which is already visible from the street. This seems like a joke and I paid so you wouldn't have to. Nearby is located the Selimia Mosque, 
also known as the Islamic Cultural Center. This is the largest mosque in Montenegro, with capacity for 1500 people, and it was built between 2002 and 2014. Beside the sea, the main attraction of Bar is the old fortress which you must see. It is located in the old part of the city and can be reached by this street with many shops, cafes and restaurants. And here we are in the fortress called Old Bar. The fortress itself is located 4 kilometers from the sea and represent a very significant archaeological site. The oldest remains are parts of the mosaic floor from a 6th century church and the old gate from the 8th century. The fortress was built and destroyed by various conquerors and its appearance was also changing. In the 16th century it received new massive walls and became larger. The clock tower is the first object we saw on the way to the fortress, and it was built before the Ottoman conquests. On the other side of the fortress is an aqueduct, the only one in Montenegro. It was built in the 18th century and was bringing water from a nearby spring into the city. Unfortunately, the beauty of the aqueduct is spoiled by nearby garbage. Within the fortress stand several religious buildings. The Orthodox Church of St. Jovan, the 15th century Church of St. Verenada, the 18th century Church of St. Catherine, the foundation of the 6th century church on which the Cathedral of St. George was built in the 11th century and Sultan Ahmed Mosque in 16. There are also remains of the Franciscan Monastery which was also converted into a mosque in the 16th century. The Gunpowder Warehouse built in the 1705 now houses various ornaments and decorative elements. As you can see behind me, some portions of the fortress are still covered in this vegetation, so they are not very accessible. I have passed by cement, mixers, various power cables, lamps, bushes and trash. Clearly, more work needs to be done to make everything tidy. I will contradict myself to some extent because some buildings have been renovated, but I still have the feeling of walking through a neglected fortress. At least the view is beautiful. The view is really beautiful. On one side is the valley and you can see the sea. On the other side here, mountains and rocks. It's a shame they don't put a little more effort into making this place nicer, because I think it could be better. The entrance fee was 3 euros for adults and 1 euro for children. I won't go in here, because it's very dark and narrow. There are several more objects inside the fortress, including a Turkish bath from the 18th century. For the very end we left the citadel, which is the highest part of the fortress. There are four wells inside it, which were used before the construction of the aqueduct. Narrow stairs lead to the top, and the view is incredible. I had a desire to visit the Rikovac tunnel, which was dug to divert the river. The map shows that the tunnel is south of the city, behind this hill, which we are slowly climbing. We are stopping for a moment to enjoy the view of the city and then descending into the valley on the other side. We just came down from this hill. There is the sea in front of us and many goats around. Some are locked up in this house and some are here in the surrounding area. We also came across a herd of cows, but we didn't find the tunnel. Here we are, out of the valley. We had a little problem with the car, our exhaust pipe broke down. 
Luckily, we managed to hook it up with some wire until we get to the nearest mechanic. The next day we are leaving bar and heading to Rumia mountain, home to the two monasteries and a 1593 meter peak. The journey to the top was very exciting. The first part of the road is relatively steep and very narrow, making it almost impossible to pass other vehicles in some sections. The second part is completely destroyed, alternating between gravel and asphalt, covered in fallen rocks. On the left side there are high bare cliffs and on the right a huge abyss. It seems so unsafe that we just wanted to pass it as soon as possible. The third part of the road completely surprised us. It's a newly paved asphalt surrounded with dense vegetation on both sides. Finally, we reached the monastery of Sergei Radonezhk. The monastery itself is recent and it was built on the site of a church that was destroyed in the 17th century. It is white with beautiful golden yellow domes. At the time of our visit the monastery was being painted, so we had the opportunity to see how this was done. The sheer beauty of the building and the environment will leave you speechless. A hundred meters before the monastery there is a path that leads to the peak of the mountain. The climb is relatively difficult, but the view from the top is incredible. On one side you can see Bar and on the other the entire Skadar Lake. At the very top there is a metal orthodox church that was brought there in 2005 and it symbolized the destruction of the several decades old tradition. Every year the cross of Saint Jovan Vladimir was carried to this place by believers of the Orthodox, Catholic and Muslim faiths. However, the placement of the church has led Catholics and Muslims to stop participating, seeing it as an attempt by the Orthodox Church to occupy this shared holy place. We continue our journey and after just a few kilometers we reach the church of Saint Nicholas. The time of construction is unknown, but it is believed to be the end of the 16th century. The church is small and very modest. This behind me is the monastery Ribnya, which is dedicated to Saint Vasilije of Ostrog, and it was built on the foundation of a former monastery dedicated to Saint John the Baptist. There is not much to say here, but we certainly enjoyed the ambience and the nature. We have also came to the monument in Tujimil, which was built in the honor of the Battle of Bar that took place on October 7, 1042. The Battle of Bar represents a very important event in both Bar and Montenegro's history. The battle was fought between Duklan army of Stefan Vojislav and the Byzantine army. Despite being outnumbered, the Duklan army defeated the much stronger enemy, establishing Duklia as the first Balkan state to secure its independence. For those who don't know, Duklia was an old Balkan state in this region. West of the bar are located the ruins of Ratat's monastery. These are the ruins of a larger monastery complex from the 9th century. It suffered its first destruction in 1468 when it was bombarded from Venetian ships. In 1532 it was plundered by the Ottomans and finally demolished in 1571. Today we are going on new adventures. We are located in Dobre Vode and we are going to explore the beaches. Here we have two beaches, Mali and Veliki Pes. The beaches are sandy with lots of pebbles and many cafes alongside. I'm returning from the beach. If you want to be like sardines in a can, then this is the ideal place. 
As you can see in the season, the crowds are incredible. So if you're looking for a little bit more space and peace, I will suggest some other destination. 5 kilometers away from here, there is the settlement of Uteha and the beach Uvala Masina. The situation is similar, sand, pebbles, crowds and cafes. The one thing that is universal to all beaches we visited is the abundance of trash. We are leaving the crowds in the city and our next destination is Valdanos. Here we'll end this video, but you can continue watching in the next part, which will cover the city of Hulsing.